So with a story like this that deals with indictments and jail time and lots of people that have gone through various parts of the criminal process, how do you walk that legal line? How do you make your participants feel comfortable that something won't trigger something else or that they are, you know, safe in discussing and sharing some aspects of these stories? Well, I mean, all of the the plot points that we um, unveil have all been sort of adjudicated. So, in essence, I don't, you know, no one can really get in trouble for 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 talking about, you know, how they participated. I mean, a lot of these guys are are you know kind of now just coming out of prison and 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 willing to share their stories. Um, you know, and a lot of it is is a is a you know it's a it's a trust issue. You know, and and um, you know we were we were able to really um build a lot of trust with 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 meech and 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 you know the flannery family um and um you know it was it was a it was a sort of a process to kind of open up and be able to share stories and you know uh a lot a lot of a lot of folks would clam up when the camera comes on you know of course you know like but you know it takes it takes some some you know uh some some easing of the tension and just you know some some coaxing to to get the 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 rhythm of the interview and and it and it everybody you know saw the value of the story you know and, and saw the value of 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 being able to share uh you know their story and their participation with 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 bmf and and um you know it's 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 an american story you know it's 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 their version of the american dream um and and it's a it's a boy to king story in a many, in, in a lot of ways and meets just has this this essence about him that that really you know just people gravitated towards him I and mean, the first you know a few times that i talked to him on the phone i was just like oh i get it this guy's a natural born leader and, and you know i would follow him <laughs> you know he was like immediately an instant big brother uh to me and and um it was just it was just really uh it was just uh, amazing to be that connected and that close to the inner circle of of this organization and and um and yeah i'm I'm glad they were very open to to tell their story so i want to talk to you about the investigators and the law enforcement who participated in the project they seem to have almost a fondness in some ways for me and the different characters and how they um conducted their business and kind of led them on the chase and so forth. So can you talk to me about the process of bringing them in to participate and their willingness to sort of open up how they um, handled this case and what they did admire about their subjects and that? Yeah, it was it was um, the same way, you know, we had to build trust um, on the BMF side we absolutely had to build trust on on the law enforcement side as well and and you know because a lot of a lot of folks were were hesitant to participate just because bmf is celebrated and you know they're they're a criminal organization and they're like well what you know is this going to be another fluff piece on bmf like or is this going to be a, a, a sort of look at the real story and we had to sort of essentially you know assure them that this was the deep dive we wanted to hear the ups and downs and and sort of everything in between and um you know once you sort of it's it's a it's a it's a it's a closed club you know in in a brotherhood and a bond that 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 is formed with law enforcement when they bring down an organization this big you know a lot of these folks you know haven't seen each other for 10 15 years but you know that 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 bond and that 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 um friendship is 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 really so if you get the trust of one especially somebody like jack harvey and they vouch for you then it's easy to sort of like well you, you should talk to this person you should talk to that person then it becomes like a sort of domino effect where you know we're we're you know we we, we can get the sort of fuller picture i mean we we were able to get the sort of key figures there were others um sort of you know from detroit this was a massive case you know this was a huge conspiracy uh you know this this spanned across the entire country there were there were dozens and dozens of participants on the bmf side and dozens of law enforcement agencies uh you know that there were that were responsible for finally taking them down um so we we had to pick and choose who our our main characters were and 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 
from my point of view, Jack Harvey stood out as as um, you know the sort of main character on the law enforcement side since he you know BMF was you know he was Captain Ahab and BMF was his Moby Dick. You know nobody believed in it, that 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 you know no, nobody believed in this case. They, people kept passing and passing and passing, and finally, you know. Um, uh, Rand Shahi and, and and others really sort of kind of you know saw how they were affecting you know uh, Atlanta and 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 got involved, but you know it's a hard case. You know, conspiracy cases are always really kind of interesting because it's not necessarily always a smoking gun. In fact, it never is. It's it's little pieces of evidence that are built throughout time, a timeline, and we we sort of demonstrate this in the in the series where you know there's cock boards with you know, pictures and lines connecting to to different you know crimes, and and um, it's really a, a complicated case. There was no sort of you know, Meech was never caught on wiretaps or or uh, you know pictures with you know selling drugs. Terry was caught on on wiretaps, but you know there was this whole umbrella of activity that was happening. Umbrella is probably the wrong word, but this web of of activity that was happening around them. That they had to sort of pin back uh, to to Meech and Terry, which was which was you know it took years, it took years and years and years, um, and um, and so yeah, so building that trust, and and again you know they they the thing about most drug organizations we, we kind of talk about this in in the doc is that you know most drug organizations you take power by violence you know that's that's essentially kind of from the Italian mafia to the cartels. Um, you know, to other drug drug organizations, violence is the key and the in the, the, the tool in, in which most organizations yield to, to to take business or to take over territory or, or, or what have you. You know, Meech and Terry, uh, you know, they were were they use diplomacy, they use logic. You know, they're like, we're gonna sell it for cheaper. <laughs> And so you're going to want, you know, you're going to want to get it from us. And if, and if you steal from us, well, then you're cut off the line. You know what I mean? It's, and it's not about killing you or it's not about, it's, it's more about diplomacy. And, and, and I think that to me, that's what drew me to the story. It wasn't just a typical, you know, quote unquote drug organization. They, they, um, they did things differently. And, and um, I think law enforcement, although they understood that it was illegal, they had a sort of certain respect for the way that they did business. You know, they had an understanding that that this was about money and it wasn't about, you know, um, about violence. And I think that they, um, they, they, they understood that. And they understood that, you know, it was a big task to organize this many people across the country. And, and, and you know, they were very clever, you know, and how they, they did their business and how they kept under the radar for, for many, many, many years. I mean, at one point, I think they were responsible for 60% of the cocaine coming yeah. into, uh, into America, which is, you know, unheard of, you know, for, 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 you know, an organization that 60%, I mean, if you think about it, it's, it's uh, staggering. And that it was, you know, one organization. I also appreciate that some of the characters on the law enforcement side with the wire reference in there did kind of remind you of those archetypes and it was just real. So just goes to yeah, the it's, it's art imitating life, imitating art again, you know, this whole, you know, they were using the wire, we're watching the wire. It was, it's, it's, there was amazing stories coming from both sides. 